These powders are going to blow your mind. They work just like magic, and I will be showing you a simple watercolor technique today. Let's get into it. I am going to start off with some watercolor paper. I have a few different uh, Lindy's Magicals here. These are from different sets, so if you want the same colors, you're going to have to get a few different sets. They don't sell too many uh, individual pods, but these are the colors that I'm going to be using today. I'm also going to be using this one. This one is called Glitzy Magical Gleaming Gold. It's just going to give a little bit more shimmer to the whole project. All right, I'm going to start off with the darkest color first, and I'm just going to just sprinkle it on. And I want a little bit down here, but I want the majority to be up top. Okay, and really a little bit goes a long way. So you really don't need a lot. I'm gonna close this because I am known to drop things and I don't want that all over the place. I'm going to take a little bit of the purple and just kind of sprinkle it. And this is a dry brush. I don't really like to uh, dip a wet brush into my magicals. It's not going to hurt it, but it just kind of clumps it up if it's too wet. And then I'm gonna take these two. I'll probably use a little bit more of this one. This is Wild Rose Rouge. As you could see, it doesn't look like the color it's going to become, which I think is part of the magic for these. I think it's just super cool to watch. All of the pigment and the color just come to life. Then I'm going to add a little bit of this one. This is Foxy Glove Fuchsia, Fox Glove Fuchsia. This one's a really pretty one. All right, it's probably way too much, but it's gonna be really, really pretty. All right, now what I like to do is I like to spray it from a pretty high up so that it doesn't, the powder doesn't blow all over my surface so that it just kind of gets a little wet and then it'll stick a little bit better to my paper, if that makes sense. And then I'm not going to just douse it with a bunch of water because then all the powder is just going to blow all over the place and that's not what I want. And then once it's a little wet, I'm going to just continue to add the water more and more. Oh, isn't that just amazing? So, so pretty. All right. Then what I like to do is I like to tip it. Probably put a little bit too much blue, but we're going to fix that. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a paper towel and just kind of blotch up some of that really dark blue there. And then I can add a little bit more water to help it kind of flow together and mix together and then we'll just continue to kind of tilt back and forth and then in areas where it's not going anywhere you can go in with some more water like here and don't be afraid to use your fingers your fingers are your best tool I promise it won't hurt anything all right I'm just gonna continue to tilt it back and forth and with all of this excess, what I like to do is take a couple of Tim Holtz tags, wet them a little bit, and then just kind of smush them in that color. Because I don't want to waste any of this, right? And then we have some tags ready to go. Look at how pretty that is. Let me get a little bit darker there. gonna smush it just like that and then I'll set those aside to dry all right I don't know if you can see but there is still a lot of the pigment that hasn't kind of mixed in with the rest so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more water in the areas and then I'll use my finger and mix it together All right, you can even go in with a paintbrush that I had put a little bit of water on. If you don't want to get your fingers dirty, and just kind of go in and tap, tap, tap. You're not really doing brush strokes because it's not the kind of look that I'm going for. I'm kind of going for more of like a dreamy, almost 
um, like a galaxy look and then I'll kind of pick up some of that and extra color and just splatter it on. All right, now I'm going to dry this and then we're going to see what we get. All right, this isn't 100% dry yet, which is what I want, and I'm going to take some water in my hand and then we're going to do a little bit of water splattering. And what this is going to do, the pigment powders are going to react to the water and then give a really cool um, texture and depth to the background. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a second and then I'm gonna take a paper towel and dry up some of it. I'm gonna take the paper towel and just lightly, because I don't wanna take up all of that water, just some of it to get a lot of interest and texture. And we're going to do this several times. So this is another project and background that you're gonna to have to have a little bit of patience with because it does take a lot of time to kind of get the look that you want, but it is definitely worth it. I'm gonna go in with some more water. And I like to do bigger droplets in some areas where I just let the water fall off my hand and then if I want littler droplets I don't put as much water in my hand and then I'll just flick it off of my fingers and you can do this technique with any type of water reactive spray or inks um, pigment powders whatever you're working with it doesn't this is not a technique that is um, exclusive to the magicals all right it's looking good I wish you guys can see this in person it's so pretty and then while this has some of that water still on there I'm going to get another brush or you can clean off your brush that you were using and I'm actually going to take that gold and I'm going to sprinkle on a little bit this is very lightly dust of gold so I don't want it to overpower what is going on here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit and put it on my surface here. And this is a glass board studio mat, glass mat. It is magnetic and I absolutely love it so far. All right, then I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. Not much, just enough. There we go. And then I'm going to take that brush, mix it together. And we're making basically a watercolor. And then I'm just going to sprinkle it on. And because the background is still a little bit wet, this is going to blend out and kind of blend in with some of that background. And then in areas where it's dry, you're going to get a little bit more pigmented uh, gold splatters. It's not just pretty. All right, we are going to dry this. All right, now that it's pretty dry, I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more splatters. And what I also like to do is I like to turn my page. Uh, that way the splatters don't look too uniform and they're just kind of going in different directions. All right, I want some of that gold to hopefully break up a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit more splatters here of water. going to pick some of it up. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white pigment ink and I'm going to stamp it in the background. This is just going to give a subtle texture to the background. I'm not looking for it to be uh, part of the focal point. This is just gonna add some really cool texture. And then I'm going to just randomly, and this is going to blend in with the color because the Magicals are water reactive. So they are going to kind of, so the ink is going to pick up a little bit of that color. And it's going to help fade everything and blend everything really nicely together. So you can see just that subtle text in the background. All right, before moving on to the next step, which is going to be Distress Microglaze, we need to make sure that the ink is fully dry before we add the microglaze to the background. Now I'm going to take some Distress Microglaze and this is going to seal that color in place. It's not, it's not artist grade, it's just to keep that color where it is. So what I like to do is I like to take a dome 
blending tool and mine is really dirty it doesn't matter as long as you're using it on a dark surface like I am here and you're going to take a little bit and then what I like to do is rub it off and then even sometimes I like to dab it in the cap of the bottle and then I will go in and just add it right on top this also brightens all of those layers I don't know if you could see that but it just I don't know what it does. It's, I will always say it, it's like magic in a bottle. It's so cool. And you can use this over water coloring, uh, distress sprays, oxides, whatever you want to. All right, so here is the background now. Look how beautiful that is. I set the background aside to dry and I actually cut out quite a few of these Chinese lantern stems from this die. It's from Simon Says Stamp and all of the links to all of the supplies will be in the description box for you just in case you are wanting some of them. But I do wanna encourage you to use what you have on hand. All right, so what I like to do or well, I don't like to do it, but I'm going to do it because I like the effect, uh, is I'm going to layer a few of these, probably five of them together. And if I am being honest, I hate doing this, but this die is too intricate to do my little trick, which is normally if I'm doing a sentiment or a word um, and I want to stack them together and I want to get a little bit more dimension, I will cut it out of foam, like kids fun foam. But again, this is too intricate. So I'm going to take some glue. All right, so I'm going to take this Barely Art, I think it's called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And let me tell you, I just recently got some. I've heard about it, but never tried it out. And I got it off of Amazon. And I love this little fine tip. And I will say that most of the reason why I don't like to do this, stacking the dies together, and I know a lot of other crafters do it, I don't care for it, but I love the look. But it's because I never had the right glue. I'm realizing that. Um, I still don't, I would rather not do it, but um, I do like the look. So I just wanna get most of the area i'm not too particular about getting it in every little spot all right then we're going to take one and then stack it together as best you can and this is can get very tedious um, as you start building up the layers all right i'm just gonna press this down shift it a little bit and there we go smush it all together and get all that excess glue out as you start building the layers it's going to be more and more important to not get so much excess glue to where it's spilling out everywhere um, because then when you get to the top and that happens you might get some grubby look <laughs> like see how my hands are you know, even though I cleaned them, there's still probably something on them where it can transfer onto the dye and you don't want that. You want that nice, crisp, clean look. All right, I'm going to finish these up. I'm not going to bore you with stacking five of them on top of each other. And I will be back to show you the finished product. All right, I am going to add some double-sided adhesive to this. You know what? I forgot, I keep forgetting that I have this all right, I'm going to add some double-sided adhesive to the back of this. This is just a little tape runner from scrapbook.com. Nothing fancy. I was going to add some of this heavy-duty uh, double-sided adhesive, but I forgot that I have this. I like those better than ripping apart all the, the tape. So I'm going to line this up best I can. All right, let's see how I did. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take that stacked die and set it right on top, and you could see why I wanted to stack it up because it just looks so cool. We're gonna use that same Barely Arts glue just on the back there. Set that right in the center. Look 
at the dimension on that. Oh, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more glue to that one, but super pretty. All right, to finish it off quick and easy, I like to use these stickers from Tim Holtz. This one says, trust your crazy ideas. It's going to set that right there. Just like that. You know what I forgot to do? Was add white splatter. So that is a good thing about liquid glue is you have a little bit of time. So I like to use the gloss spray uh, in white from Dina Wakely. And what I do is I take the cap off. Don't want that dried up bit there. And then I just kind of forcefully get that ink out of that nozzle there. And if I want smaller splatters, then I'll just tap, tap, tap just lightly. This is going to help break up that background because it is so dark. And then again, I like to turn my page or background, whatever I'm working on, just so that I can get a different variation of splatters. And adding that Distress Microglaze earlier is going to help the white stay white and not seep in and mix together with the Magicals, which it will happen if you don't use the Distress micro Microglaze because the Magicals are water reactive and the spray will mix in with the Magicals. So that's why I like to use the Distress Microglaze as well. All right, now we can add that die cut right on top. And I'll probably stick something heavy right on top here so that it dries in place. All right, there you have it. That is the magical watercolor background effect with the Lindy's Magicals. This is just one of many techniques you can do with the Magicals. So if you want to learn even more, check out this video right here where I share more tips and techniques and don't forget to grab that free PDF.